If you crack first, Dave, it won't make you any less of a man. I'm nowhere near cracking. Neither am I, my friend. Oh, Dave. And oh, Matthew, what is it now? For God's sake, no one's smoking, okay? But, but nothing! You know what we need around here is an anti-whining ordinance. So just sip your sniveling little lip and all your skinny ass out of Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and it's time for some more comic industry news. Today we're talking Marvel Comics. There's been a lot of information coming out lately. Apparently their solicitations for August should be dropping somewhat soon, probably um, probably next week. We've got information on the 60th anniversary celebration of the Fantastic Four that's coming up. Going to be a big uh, special like 96-page uh, issue. Same thing to go with Venom 200. We already knew that. That will be coming out in the early part of June. We've got some new creators added to that one, and we have a new symbiote coming in the Extreme Carnage follow-up event to King and Black from Phil Kennedy Johnson. Before we get into all those details, let's talk about the big one that dropped today. Old Man Cable is returning. We've seen the character uh, showing up in just in the last few pages of several issues of Jerry Duggan's Cable series, obviously, which features Kid Cable. This is good news probably to a lot of people. It's going to be called Cable Reloaded. It's going to be associated with the last Annihilation crossover event from Al Ewing that's going to be going between the Guardians of the Galaxy and S.W.O.R.D., another Reign of X series that Al Ewing is working on. He will be writing this one with Bob Quinn on art, an amazing cover by Stefano Caselli. Really wish he was doing more interior work. I think he did some stuff on Marauders there for a bit, but they should really have him as a, one of the headline artists on one of these X-Men books. I think that would help out a lot. A lot of people do not like Kid Cable. He's been much derided, especially during the follow-up to House of X, Powers of Ten, during Dawn of X, now in Reign of X. Me, personally, I like Kid Cable. If you ever read the Extermination series, it was just a mini-series from Ed Brisson that introduced the character, why he's there, why he killed the original Cable. It's actually quite intriguing. The character is almost night and day in comparison to what we received during the Jonathan Hickman era X-Men. A lot of people probably blame that on Jerry Duggan. I believe he's probably partially responsible, but the first appearance that we saw of Kid Cable in Jonathan Hickman era X-Men is in the X-Men number one from Jonathan Hickman himself. And you, you could see it right from that issue that it was a different take on the character. He'd been tweened down, he lost his edge, and he was far less interesting than what Ed Brisson had originally uh, introduced. I think that's probably why this series did not do very well and has been canceled due to low sales. Does this mean that we're going to be getting a cable series, just a regular cable series in the near future? I do not know. It certainly doesn't touch on this. It sounds like Al Ewing has some plans. This is what he had to say about his, uh, his upcoming cable reloaded series. This gives me and Bob a chance to explore Marvel's other man out of time and his natural element, a high octane action fest with a few old friends and new friends. To help defeat the last annihilation, Cable and his team will be taking on some long unseen X-Men foes, man-to-man uh, -man and quite literally face-to-face. -face. And this is the solicitation. The big gun is back! It's a new era in a new galaxy that's under siege from a deadly new threat, but you can still rely on one man. Cable is locked, loaded, and landing on the deadliest planet in X history to steal the ultimate weapon and stop the last annihilation. So there you go. This is actually pretty exciting. I think a lot of people will be very happy to see the original Cable kind of return to the forefront. We do know that the last story arc that Jerry Duggan does in the Cable series that's about to be, be finishing up will have some type of conflict between Kid Cable and Old Man Cable. I don't imagine that we'll have a definitive winner like we did in Extermination, and they'll probably both be alive at the end of it, and we'll probably see Kid Cable still in the pages of... Uh, of Reign of X, but we shall see. So if you're a fan of Old Man Cable, he's coming back, people. Next up, we do have the Fantastic Four, number 35, also known as the 60th anniversary celebration of the team. This is going to be written by Dan Slott, but R.B. Silva, the normal artist, will not be illustrating this, at least his story. It's going to be returning to Marvel Comics, and I believe this is going to be his first published art, is John Romita Jr., I know a lot of people are probably very excited to see JRJR JR return to Marvel Comics. I don't believe that he was showing off his best work over at DC. Don't know that they had him really on the characters or stories that would best suit his art style. Hopefully he'll do a better job here at Fantastic Four. I don't imagine he's going to be the, the artist on Fantastic Four moving forward. R.B. Silva's doing a good job. 
and it sounded like he had another big project. But this will be the follow up to the Bride of Doom story arc that I think started like this week. And this is what Marvel had to say. This year, Marvel Comics is proud to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Fantastic Four, home to concepts and characters that revolutionized comic book storytelling. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's beloved creations have enjoyed one of the most memorable sagas in comic book history, and this year we'll see some of their greatest adventures yet. Following the highly anticipated Bride of Doom storyline, August uh, Fantastic Four 35 will be a special giant size spectacular that will see series writer Dan Slott teaming up with legendary artist John Romita Jr., also with a backup story in here is going to be Mark Wade, who had a very celebrated run on Fantastic Four, if I remember correctly, with Michael Waringo. Obviously, uh, Mr. Waringo will not be able to join him, unfortunately. This is going to be all about the Kang bloodline, and they're going to be introducing a new character called Scion, who will likely be associated with the Kang family. And Paul Renaud is going to be the artist on that one. The third backup story is going to be Jason Liu writing and drawing it, and that's his Marvel Comics debut. So if you've been waiting for Jason Liu at Marvel Comics, this will be a comic book that you're probably very interested in. The Fantastic Four are essentially the launching point for Marvel Comics as we know them. There's so many things that are still being mined that were laid in the groundwork of Fantastic Four by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. This is probably a can't miss. I do want to say I appreciate the way that Marvel Comics is, are doing their anniversary editions. DC's been doing a lot of anniversaries, 80th anniversary specials, you know, Action Comics 1000, DC, uh, Detective Comics 1000, Detective Comics 1027. And what they do is you normally get a feature story by the main writer that goes along with the series. And then you get seven, eight backup stories, and they're all like maybe eight to ten pages. I don't really like anthologies to begin with. I would much prefer three well thought out, well constructed and executed stories over one normal size story and a bunch of little short backups. So I think what Marvel is doing probably is going to read better. And I'm a little bit happier with the way that Marvel is do doing their anniversary issues over DC Comics. But that's just a personal preference. If you talk to, to retailers, they're very happy with what DC were doing because they sold the crap out of them and they moved a lot of units for a lot of money. Next up, we have Venom 200. We knew this was coming up. This is going to be the end of Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's over three-year run on the series. So this is also going to be issue number 35, doubling as a 200th issue of Venom. This is also going to be 96 pages, going to be an anthology. We're getting uh, stories, obviously. The headline story will be Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman as they move on from Venom. But we're also getting Philip Kennedy Johnson, who is going to be writing the uh, Extreme Carnage event following this. There's some news about that after this as well. But we're also getting uh, artists Chris uh, Giriusu, Danilo uh, Beirut, Gerardo Sandoval, Kev Walker, Mark Bagley, and Ron Lim. Obviously, the big name there is Mark Bagley. A man very closely associated with Spider-Man. And a lot of those shirts and toys that you love are almost all designed after Mark Bagley's work with the, with the character. He's also done some excellent stuff with Venom. Venom 200 is absolutely can't miss if you've been reading the Donny Cates run, I obviously have. We've had two big events, Absolute Carnage and King in Black. So this is coming out in June 9th. It was originally supposed to be coming out in April. It's been pushed back and pushed back. It seemed like they were doing that to help things line up with some of the delays that were happening with the King in Black associated miniseries. We saw there were King in Black stories coming out after the last issue of King in Black, but it Hopefully they've got all that stuff uh, lined up now. This is what Marvel has to say about this issue. This is it, Venomaniacs. The landmark 200th issue starring the most sinister symbiote in the Marvel Universe arrives. And after this, nothing will be the same. From Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman, and a who's who of artists from the issues that tore Eddie Brock's life asunder and brought the King of Black to Earth comes the final chapter of the rest of Venom's life. But in Noel's wake, what even remains of the lethal protector? There you go. So that's what's going to be going on. And as I mentioned, this is Camp Is. If you're a Venom fan, you're absolutely going to want to be in on this. And if you're not a Venom fan, you might have just been reading it for the Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman work. And this is uh, this is the swan song. This is it, baby. Following up with that is going to be Marvel's Extreme Carnage event, which will be Philip Kennedy Johnson. I'm a big fan of his. I really liked his work on The Last God, which is like a horror fantasy book. Probably fits his uh, writing style to this Extreme Carnage event, although I am uh, event fatigued on Carnage or or Venom, 
kind of related books. I think they've had enough events. But we are getting one more, and there's going to be a bunch of one-shots featuring the symbiotes that we have in our world. In the Extreme Carnage, Lasher Number 1 by Chris Mooneyham and Clay McLeod Chapman, they are going to be introducing a new symbiote. And this is what Marvel Comics has to say. Witness the birth of a new symbiote four issues into the carnage event of the summer, and the bodies just, just keep piling up, including some of the Venomaniacs, the mighty Marveldom know and love. But now is not a time to mourn for fallen heroes or their symbiotes. Carnage is on the loose, and he's building an army. Not completely clear who the new symbiote is. They have not mentioned a name or how the character is going to be introduced. But if you are a big fan of symbiotes in the Marvel Universe and you have to have that first issue or the first appearance, you're going to need to pick up Extreme Carnage Lasher number one, which will have the uh, first appearance of a new symbiote being introduced. If you are a fan of Lasher, I believe that he was conscripted to be part of the King of Black's army. We don't know exactly what his state is right now. Obviously, he's still alive. He's got his own one shot. But uh, hopefully, Lasher comes back better than ever in this, uh, in this Extreme Carnage Lasher comic series. So that is the comic book news for Marvel Comics today. We've got a lot of stuff coming out. The big news is the original Cable's coming back, baby. Kid Cable's no more. Well, his series is no more. I imagine he's still the Marvel Universe. But the, the original Cable is coming back, and he's joining up with the fight for the last Annihilation from Al Ewing. Bob Quinn's going to be on art. Got an amazing cover from Stefano Caselli that uh, looks like a million bucks, and I think a lot of people are going to be happy about that news. Fantastic Four is celebrating their 60th anniversary with a big 96-page uh, special. Going to have a huge story from Dan Slott, John Romita Jr. returning with his first art of Marvel Comics. Going to get some backup stories from uh, from Mark Wade, so that should be exciting. Venom 200, we've added Mark Bagley, we've added Phil Kennedy Johnson, and a host of other artists to that one. And we are introducing a new symbiote in Extreme Carnage Lasher number one. That is your news today. Let me know what your thoughts are in the in the comments section. Are you excited about any of those? What are you most excited for? And uh, I cannot wait to see you all tomorrow on the Comics Aficionados live right here on the channel. And if you've been checking in on the podcast, the comic wrap will be up today. It's a, basically a, a collection of all the best interviews of the week. I do a, a brand new, a basically monologue of whatever the hottest topic of the week is. And uh, got lots of great stuff with a lot of great contributors this week. So be looking out for that. If you haven't checked out the podcast, the information on how to find it is in the uh, video description. And I'll see you all later. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.